This is the RNET 4, which is a wireless CO2 detecting sensor. Check your air quality. How is your air quality? I don't know. How is it? So this reads CO2, relative humidity, and atmospheric pressure. It displays the data on the screen, but also transfers the information to your phone via the RNET app for real-time readings and data tracking. It'll store up to seven days of measurement history. Goodwill. This is an air quality audit. We're about two minutes in at Goodwill. We're already at 1181. Look at that, 100% merino wool. All right, so check this out. So we have these good, average, and unhealthy readings of CO2. Uh, CO2 levels 420 parts per million for fresh outdoor air. That's what, ideal what everyone should be breathing. Below 1,000 parts per million, optimal CO2 for indoor levels. We have 1,000 to 1,400 parts per million. Brain con cognitive, I can't pronounce that word, function decreases by 15%. And then above 1,400 parts per million, yeah, you're declining by 50%. So I'm out here in my garage. I've got my kerosene heater right there. I'm going to plug it in. i got some cleaning up i got to do in here, and we're just going to check the levels here. Um, I'm going to let it go real time. This is updating every single minute, so... It's definitely hot in here. <laughs> All right, so we're looking at 7,135. Brought it up to almost 66 degrees. Um, I don't know if you heard me or not, but this is a, a carbon monoxide detector too. This thing costs like around 80, 90, maybe even 100 bucks. This is what I usually use for my garage. But like you can see here, I'll push it. And it says pass at 7,400. Let's open up the garage door, see how long it takes to get that number back down. See, so it's dropping back down. We're at 51 now. If I were to take this outside, let's go ahead and take it outside. Give it about a minute to update. And there we go. Fresh air, 452. So the unit is pretty basic. There's no on off switch. The only physical buttons or switches are located under the battery compartment. There you'll find four different switches. The first is used for calibration where you can choose auto or manual. By using the app, you can calibrate the sensor by placing it out in the fresh uh, outdoors for 30 minutes. Uh, the next switch will switch the temperature unit from Celsius to Fahrenheit. And the third switch will toggle between Bluetooth on and off. Uh, and the fourth isn't relevant for this unit particularly because it's um, for the Pro version. Uh, so they do include this tiny pin tool to assist you in switching these tiny switches. So I've had this sensor for about a month now and have used it in different rooms to track CO2 readings. The readings can be set to be taken every one, two to five or 10 minutes. I have it set to one right now, but when using it in my bedroom at night, uh, I was surprised at the results. I can tell every time my heater kicks on because there would be a spike in the CO2 levels. And the more bodies you have together in an area for long periods of time, the less oxygen there's going to be. All right, Dollar Tree, we're coming for you. 
kind of suspected this. I just walked in here, literally just walked in here. First reading is almost 1300. Crazy. Like no one in this store either. So let's jump into the app. You can see it right here. I just click on this and you will see the reading right there. I can click on this and it will show the graph of today. Blow that up. Individual times. Go yesterday. Seven days. And I can even click on the calendar and choose a specific day and hit select. Okay, so besides this, we can go back, we can go into settings, and here from settings, we can go to measurement interval. We can have it set to one minute, two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes. It does have a built-in buzzer. It isn't very loud. Um, we can set it to go off once the CO2 measurement over 1400 PPM, or every time um, it goes above 400 PPM. Uh, Bluetooth range, we have normal or extended. I found normal to be pretty sufficient. Um, smart home integration. Let's see if we can turn that on and off. I'm not exactly sure what that does, but I have mine on. Firmware, CO2 indication mode, and CO2 calibration. You can uh, calibrate this directly from the app. You would just click on this. You would need to put this outside or in a place where it's gonna be close to 420 parts per million and then you hit calibrate and let it sit there for like 30 minutes. Uh, let's see here, besides that, if we click these three little lines right here, we can go in, we change uh, from English to all those languages. Oh, let's go back. Temperature unit, this is where you would change it to Fahrenheit on the actual app. Uh, pressure unit, we have HPA, we can set that to all of those. Oops. Uh, date format, just day, month, and year. Full screen, off. Uh, we can set that to light theme, dark theme, okay. Screen, keep screen on, and background data read, off. And yeah, that's basically what the app entails. All right, we're at the library. This is a air quality audit. Stay tuned. These guys are getting a solid pass. 545. I've been in here for a while now. They must have a fresh air exchange somewhere. CVS Pharmacy. Now a lot of these places aren't really too crowded, but we're gonna check them anyway. Been in here a couple minutes. Standing in line around a bunch of people too. We still got a 731, so I'd say well, uh, CVS passes. At the Dollar General, let's see their air quality. Not too shabby, 874. So let's go over some of the pros and cons for this. Uh, the first pro is that it will track your CO2 readings and it makes it super easy. They're displayed right here on the screen. You can even have it update every single minute. It also goes to your phone via the app and you, it makes tracking your CO2 readings very, very easy. The app's easy to use. Everything's relatively easy to use. Uh, some of the cons from time to time, this sensor in particular that I got does have a spike. It, it's like it spikes and I don't understand why it's spiking. It doesn't make any sense to me um, about the environment or anything, but it will just spike and then it'll go back down. This kept happening after I calibrated it outside too, so I didn't see any difference there. But I've kind of known to look for that spike, and then if it just goes up for one minute and then back down, it's just like, oh, I don't know what the heck's happening with the sensor in there, but that happens on this, on this unit that I have. So maybe my sensor might be slightly off or something. Um, something else I would like them to do is add like a backlight feature. So if, if, if it's dark, you're not gonna be able to read the screen, so just add a backlight. But besides that, I think this sensor is pretty good. 